Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a long-awaited end of project wrap-up video for this 1-6 scale German SDKFZ 222 armored car. Before I go ahead with the video, let's go ahead and take a nice walk around of the completed model. For anyone who stumbled into this video for the first time, this build here has a entire playlist devoted for just this model from start all the way to its finished form that we have here. All these videos are found in numerical order on the East Coast Armory YouTube channel. There you will see in detail and with more information all the work that went into the base starter model to get it all the way up to completion. As you can see, the model in this video here is 100% complete and will now be put in a case and put on display. We'll be going over the functions as well as a basic overview of the model in this video. The model that you see here is built for my own personal collection and is not for sale and or purchase. Also, unlike my other build videos in which I take on commission builds from 135th scale all the way up to 1/6 scale, this vehicle here is one vehicle type that I will not be offering commission build services for due to the sheer complexity of this build. Which is highly ironic to say because all throughout the years I've been building 1.6 scale tanks, I have done just about everything from the T28 Super Heavy Tank, M26 Pershing, Shermans, Tigers, Panthers, and yet of all of those builds, this 222 that you see here 
has been by far the most difficult, which is astounding in the fact that it's nothing more than a light reconnaissance vehicle. For anyone who stumbled into this video for the first time, this build here has a entire playlist devoted for just this model from start all the way to its finished form that we have here. All these videos are found in numerical order on the East Coast Armory YouTube channel. There you will see in detail and with more information all the work that went into the base starter model to get it all the way up to completion. As you see the model in this video here is 100% complete and will now be put in a case and put on display. We'll be going over the functions as well as a basic overview of the model in this video. For a quick summary update, this vehicle here started off as an all plastic flat panel kit from the manufacturer MNC Flat Armor. In the lower corner of the screen, you will see the snippet from when I first started the model showing all of the components and what the starter kit supplied you with. Just like I said in that video, MNC Flat Armor was a very small time, one six scale model company. They offered a very limited range of German armored fighting vehicles in one six scale. What made their vehicles unique was that the models came in several panels of water cut plastic styrene. The water jetted parts were that of body panels which then would be left for the model builder to cut them off, glue them together and detail and assemble further. The original kits came out from around 2005 and to around 2007. MC Flat Armor went under around 2007 and around 2008. Of the kits they produced, only a very small handful were ever released to the market. This 222 is being one of them. Of, from what I understand, only about 20 of the 222 kits were ever released. And trying to track one of these kits down is actually very difficult. Now, even though I said that this model started off as a kit, if you watch the Project Stark video, you will see that the kit components were extremely basic. The only components that the kit actually supplied you with were just the panels for the upper body, the turret, and the doors. Literally every single component that you see on this model here in this video was scratch built either by myself or was acquired as an aftermarket accessory from one of the vendors, which I'll be listing below in the description. The model wound up in my possession as a trade that I had with a friend of mine in which I traded some parts in. In return, I received one of these kits. The model was acquired, like I said, in 2011, and at the time of this video, it took three years to get the model to its completed state that you see it here. The reason for the longer build time was due to the fact that I had a lot of other projects going on at ECA at the time, and also for the sheer amount of scratch building required and the amount of details that needed to be tooled up and molded in order to get the model up to these specs. Starting with the model's chassis, the model's chassis that you see here below the body frame is literally all scratch built. The fabrication materials include materials as plastic, resin, and metal. Actually, all three of those materials are what's used on the entire build. The only place where wood of any sort is utilized is for that of wooden tool handles. Other than that, there is absolutely no wood of any sort on this build. Back to the suspension. The suspension of the model is as accurate as I can build it. It is both spring bound, as well as it has quad steer capabilities. The front and re rear wheels both steer and they steer in unison with each other. This is greatly showed to effect in the project update videos, and you can see it in the below corner. In addition to the frame, 
all of the lower details are included, which includes that of the transmission, the control arms, as well as even the lubrication and brake lines. The tires that you see here on this model are made out of resin and are from panzerwork.com. Now the model that you see here is also static. This model cannot be made radio controlled, nor do I have any plans to attempt to make it radio controlled. The reason for that is due to the sheer fragility of the suspension components, as well as the fact that since this model has an in full interior detailing, the radio controlled option is completely impossible. Now, in case anyone was wondering, yes, there is a 1-6 scale radio controlled SDKZ222 armor car kit. That kit was offered by ArmorTech, and fortunately, that kit itself is also quite rare and hard to come by. Those models do build well, and with a quick detail, exterior detail polish, do present very well. Moving up from the suspension takes us to the model's tin work. All of the fenders and storage box that you see on this vehicle are all scratch built out of sheet metal. The construction is all soldered and riveted construction with use of fasteners. Absolutely no adhesives whatsoever are used in the fabrication as well as on the installation of these components. In fact, the fenders themselves are mounted to the vehicle's hull in the same way that they're found on the real vehicle with that of small support struts and mounting fasteners. Here we can see a close-up of the assembly for the use of mounting the fasteners to the body. Note all of the rigidity strips and mounting equipment utilized for this application. Same can be said with just about all the other components on the lower hull, including the bumper and the other armor plate. Now, just like with the engine hatches, the two side doors are also fully operational in the same manner. For these doors here, the locking system was absolutely mandatory as due to the shape of the hull of the 222, the gravity is gonna wanna keep the doors open all the time, specifically with this large heavy box that is located on the doors. I went ahead and unlocked the door from the outside with the Allen wrench, and you can see the door simply hinges open showing all the detail found on the door itself. The door detailing that you see here is a mirror image on the opposite side. And here you can see the working lock mechanism in function. All of the straps and mounting equipment that you see here is all made out of brass and is all soldered together for utmost strength. As for the crew equipment, this model will have a lot of crew equipment found on the interior of the model. All of the crew equipment is from Dragon. And here's the door on the opposite side of the model. As you can see, it is literally a mirror image. Moving our way to the top deck of the model takes us to first the radiator filler cap. This component here is fully functional and by twisting it, I can remove it to get access to the radiator filler cap detailing. In addition to the filler cap, we move towards the front, which takes us to the honeycomb grill work. This grill work that you see here is a distinctive trait found on the 222 series and is one that is that of the 222. It's not a simple type off the shelf mesh system that you would find on other components on other vehicles. This grill that you see here was probably one of the hardest components to fabricate for this entire model. The grill work that you see here is all made by hand and it's all made with metal strips that are all soldered together construction. Literally every single piece that you see here was hand cut, bent, shaped, and soldered in place. It's one of those things that I really don't want to ever do again. However, once it's fully complete, really makes the model shine. Moving towards the turret, takes us to first the grenade grills. Like I mentioned in the update video, the grenade grills that you see here are fully functional and are fabricated again, all of metal construction. That is all soldered together. The, great, the grenade grills that you see here are another distinctive feature found on this pattern of vehicle. One thing that's unique about the 222 is that the gun and the turret are connected to each other as opposed to on most tanks, the gun is mounted to the turret and the turret just simply sits on the vehicle. On the 222, the gun is actually mounted to the chassis of the vehicle 
and the turret simply gets mounted to the gun carriage and is really more or less long for the ride. Like I said before, the turret and gun on this model are completely removable. This was done in order for me to get access into the interior, also for viewers to get a good appreciation of the detailing work that went into not only the gun and the gun carriage, but also on the, the interior itself. To remove the turret and the gun, I simply grab the front and back of the turret and lift the entire setup out of the vehicle. Starting with the interior detailing of the body, As you can see, the interior features all of its interior mounting components, as well as all the other interior detailing. Moving to the turret and the turret interior detailing. Here we can see what I was referring to earlier, how the entire turret is fastened to the gun carriage. And then the carriage itself would be hard bolted directly to the chassis. As for the armament of the vehicle, it's that of an automatic flat cannon. That's magazine fed. And as a MG34, in the coaxial mount. More, much more detail and information about this setup is discussed in the project update videos, which are found on the playlist. Just like with the other components, the rear hatch over here is also fully functional. Here we can see the radio, which was also heavily discussed in the one video update. Moving our way to the tools. Like I said before, all of the tool handles that you see here are the only real wooden components on this model. Here we have an external shovel and the rest of the tanks, Pioneer tools, namely that of the shovel and and clipper are all located on interior mounts inside the vehicle. Now, like all of my 1-6 scale builds, the tools are fully removable and can be plucked off of the model for diorama purposes. This is true for not only the shovel here, but also for the other tools that are mounted on the inside portion of the model. As for the shovel here, this is from another manufacturer called 6 scale icons, who was recently acquired by Field of Armor. Again, the links are listed below. Moving our way to the front, takes us to the side view mirror. As we can see here, it is a real mirror. And again, is one of those things that helps the look of the model. The turn indicators that you see here are resin and they're from, again, panzerwork.com, as well as the no-tech light. However, the two headlights in the front are from East Coast Armory. In addition to the NoTech light, the siren that you see here is another component from Panzerwerk. Back to the NoTech, one of my favorite components on this entire model to fabricate was that of this brush guard. The brush guard is very elegant on the 222 and it was one of those components that was very enjoyable in fabricating. It is all comprised out of soldered brass and everything is bent and soldered in, sh in the shape that you see it here. And again, everything is then bolted to the timberwork of the fender. Also, what I forgot to mention was that on the fenders themselves, they have little storage boxes that are integrally found on the tops of the fender. And you can see the shape of the fender is how the storage bin is actually fused into the component. Again, more detail of that is discussed in the project updates. Same can also be said on the rear portion of the vehicle. Here we have the rear no tech light. This light here is again from Panzerwerk and is resin. The brush guard, just like the one on the front, is all brass construction. 
and is soldered directly to the the storage box that we have here. Storage box itself is also fully functional. It is a mirror image on the opposite side of the model. Only difference is that instead of a square Notec light, it is a round convoy light. Convoy light is fully scratch built by myself. And again, so is the rest of the brush guard and fender detailing. Quickly to the exhaust. The exhaust on the component here is a resin component from East Coast Armory and is a very interesting component the way it gets mounted to the frame. As you can see, there is a pretty elaborate bracket system which holds the exhaust to the frame with fasteners. All of the details that you see here were taken off of a real photographs of 222 armored cars, namely the one that was for a period of time housed in the Littlefield collection. Like I said on, in the beginning of the video, of all the models that I've done in 1.6 scale as either kits or scratch built, static or radio controlled, this model here was hands down the hardest one I've ever done. As you can see from this video and if you ever watch the project updates, you will really get a good grasp on why. Which is kind of funny why I always see on some 1-6 scale news groups whenever someone asks a question about what is a real easy 1-6 scale model to, to scratch build, the 222 is always one of the first recommended. As you can see from this video, it's really not as easy as everyone claims it is. Even though the model was as hard as it was and was as time consuming as it was, it is definitely one of those models that I am really glad that I had built. It is definitely one that pushed my skills as well as pushed the fabrication techniques that I have as well as probably learning some new techniques that went in this build as well. This build definitely is going to be a great addition to the collection and I is one that I can't wait to put in a, in a case and honestly never touch again. With that, that concludes this model wrap-up video for this German 1-6 scale, mostly scratch-built SDKZ 222 armor car. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook where I have the rest of the static photography of this build posted. In addition to that, check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1-6 and 1-16 scale builds, and detail components. Till next time, thank you.